Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Neil Lennon and Tam McManus with me here on today's show. And here's what we're going to talk about. Philippe Clement calls for more protection for players after Ross McCausland was added to the Rangers injury list against Motherwell. And we have now already several players kicked off the pitch this season. Brendan Rodgers name checks John Beaton as he blasts the VAR calls that he believes cost Celtic in their defeat to Hearts. Graeme Souness claims referees in Scotland will be embarrassed by VAR as the officials come under fire for a string of decisions this weekend. The technology is not the problem, but you have to forget that. It's the people making the calls that are looking at that technology. And Neil Warnock blames Cramp for agonising late defeat to St Mirren after a lengthy VAR check for a penalty delayed the restart in Paisley. You shouldn't be stood about for four or five minutes on a bloody freezing afternoon for VAR. Mate, it's scandalous. Armstrong. OK, um, Tom hasn't quite grasped what a football show is all about. He's just, he just actually just sitting there talking to himself while everybody's here. Um, so, great. Um, once he gets into the, the, the way a football show runs, Ruffy, then he can think about replacing you. Yeah. But until then, yeah. it's, it's, it's ticking, your Ruffy. man. Is in, he's in the box seat. So yeah. I'd replace her, replaceable Pete. You can't replace Ruffy. That's, you know I mean? that's, that's how you do it. Like, you know, that's the manager. That's for years you. of experience. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the di diplomatic answer. <laughs> exactly. I'd just be a cardboard cut. <laughs> <laughs> Get that mannequin over uh, yeah, We have thought about the mannequin on a number of occasions. Would that be better? Absolutely, instead of the sub here. Um, but anyway, apart from anything else, great to have you on the show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and join the football family there. And of course, over and above that, if you download the app, you'll get all the breaking news at your fingertips. There's lots to talk about. And before we get into the meat and bones of the weekend in the Scottish Premiership, which, as you may well want to comment on, uh, it's the first time it's happened in six years. Both Rangers and Celtic lost over the weekend, and that's very unusual indeed. Uh, quick one on some of the points that uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, first of all, Leela Bada, roughly. It looks as if he's on his way in an £11 million deal to uh, the MLS. It's quite a sad end to it because without getting into the politics of what's happening in uh, Israel and Palestine in the Gaza Strip, um, quite simply, any loss of life is a tragic one. So the point here is I think Leela Bada has been under tremendous pressure because of the stance that's been taken by some supporters at Celtic Park. Yeah, again, we have to go back that uh, football players are only human. They're just like everybody else. They have the same day-to-day -day, uh, troubles they've got to deal with. And this is a massive one, obviously. And it looks as if it has affected them particularly badly. Because I, I don't think for a minute, if it hadn't, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have moved. But he's got to... I think they've obviously had discussions. You know, he's got his, his family to think of as well. So, you know, I think it's a correct decision for the boy. Yeah, absolutely. A difficult decision for Leal Abada, but one that uh, he thought it was the right move away, considering um, the stance of some supporters. And we on this football programme are not in any way dealing with the issue of the war and the rights and wrongs of it. Um, again, uh, all we really deal with is the implications of if it's the Champions League, whether people show banners that uh, prompt Celtic to get fined by UEFA, as far as the war is concerned, uh, the only thing I think we all agree on is anybody losing their life is an absolute tragedy. Um, so from Leela Bada on to the weekend's football, uh, we will look down south at what's happened in the Manchester Derby and talk about Andy Robertson. But here's a look at the Scottish Premiership results over the weekend, and it's a rare sight indeed. Uh, Dundee 2, Kilmarnock 2, Hibs 2, Ross County 0, Rangers 1, Motherwell 2, St Johnston 1, Livingston 1, St Mirren 2, Aberdeen 1, and Hearts 2, Celtic 0. Well, it would be great if that was a regular occurrence, uh, Ruffy, because we want a competitive league, but it's all too rare, and when it happens, yeah. it raises your eyebrow. Yeah, I think right at the beginning of this year, we were hoping that somebody would come up with the goods, because from a neutral point of view, Rangers and Celtic drawn away 20 points, 25 points, 30 points. We thought Aberdeen, Hibs, Hearts, but uh, there are other teams now beginning to get to that, and particularly Kilmarnock, you know, who, and, and Motherwell as well. So I think it is going to be a fight right until the end, you know, because... I think both Rangers and Celtic uh, will struggle to certain teams when they're away from home. Yeah, absolutely. Do we have to focus on the negativity uh, of Celtic and Rangers not being able to get the win or should we, I think, properly pay tribute to the teams who managed to get the win? 
depends what what side you're, you know your eggs are in the basket. But in terms of in terms of the overall <laughs> league, Peter, yeah. I think that Celtic Rangers not picking up wins. I think people can look at it and say, well, it's not the best Celtic Rangers teams there's ever been. <laughs> Uh, and then you yeah. can look at it well it's great for the, for the league in terms of other teams beating them but I think for me it, the strength of the league is not very very strong at the minute and I think Celtic and Rangers are not as strong as they could be um, losing both in, this, you know, in the same weekend I think is, is poor particularly Rangers you know, losing away at home to Motherwell so no I, I think the, the other teams will look at it and, and, and look at it and see if they've you know, made Progress, but other than that, then no, I'm in the nightmare here. Yeah, I don't worry. Don't worry, <laughs> don't, don't worry about having a nightmare. It's only the fourth of March, and already you've given us a Christmas blooper. I mean, honestly, you can't do it, Sam. Uh, absolutely, but I just say you Do you ever, uh, do you ever get one of those players that you've signed who just actually looks down at the ball and goes in amazing, doesn't know where he's going? That's exactly what was happening there with uh, Tam McManus. Anyway, apart from anything else. It was a game where Motherwell, to their credit, scored two goals at Ibrox uh, and managed a win. Philip Clement wasn't happy. He felt as if, uh, like some other teams, they've been kicked off the park. Uh, I think players need to be much better protected. And we have now already several players kicked off the pitch this season. So I think uh, they need to be protected in a better way. That's what I think. Was Dan Casey lucky to stay in the park for the challenge? Mm, I don't know about stay on the park, but there was um, it was forceful. You know, he's got the ball, but the follow through was borderline to say the least. So he, it could have went either way, and he want I think he wanted to leave a message on McCausland. Like I was saying the same thing maybe ten, fifteen years ago about the likes of James Forrest and, and players like that. I think the game is more protective of players now. I'm not convinced that you know everyone's getting kicked off the park, but um, it. We've lost, for me, part of the physicality of the game, Peter. Mm-hmm. Um, where you win the ball and then on your follow through, which sometimes you can't control, you, you connect with somebody, it's a red card. So I understand Philippe's disappointment with losing a player due to a, a crunching tackle, if you want to call it that. But you know, you can't say that um, you know players don't get enough protection because they do. Mm. Uh, Ruffy, the other talking point in the game, um, obviously you're looking at... Um, you know, Rangers, there was a goal that they scored. Obviously, Motherwell um, got two goals, which we'll look at the way they lost them. But the other talking point um, was obviously something that's completely and utterly escaped me. What was that other talking point? Was it a handball? Was it a tackle? (laughs) (laughs) What was that other talking point? I was dying to get your thoughts on. Was it a penalty? I thought it was a penalty, Peter. I think that they got to the right decision in the end. I think Stephen O'Donnell slides and then he fills him, he catches him at the end of it. Um, it took a while to get the right decision, but I think it was a penalty kick, Peter. So in, in terms of the penalty, I think the referee got that one right. Thank God you see you're here, by the way. <laughs> it, the follow-through, the other angle, and this is the point I was about to make on it, was you've got a situation where VR can look at something and give one angle, two angle, three mm-hmm. angle, I don't mind that. I don't mind that, Peter. Yeah. I think that's fine. My problem with it is I don't know what the VAR referee is saying to the referee. No. And, you know, you take, we'll talk about yesterday's incidents later on. Um, there's nothing wrong with VAR. There's nothing wrong with the technology. It's good. It gives you... Sometimes when you slow an incident down, it looks far worse than what it, what it is. Sometimes it is what it is. It's a red card or it is a penalty. I... Um, just think the interpretation of the law sometimes confuses me. And then when you're making a debate of it, they can twist the words or the ruling to whatever way they want for the outcome to be the correct one. So Tom's quite right. I, I did think in the end there was like sort of two going in for the challenge and O'Donnell has caught Silva. It almost looked as if Silva had fallen into him. Yeah. But when you see it again, it looked like a penalty. It's a bit like the Nicky Devlin one. I had to look at that a couple of times. Yeah. And that's the beauty of VAR. You know, you, you look at the Nicky Devlin one against St Mirren, I'm thinking, oh, that's not a penalty. Then when you look at it again a couple of times from the same angle, it was a penalty. So yeah. they got that one correct in the end, yeah. whether we like or whether Neil likes it or the Aberdeen fans likes it or not. I just think that sometimes they get 
some of these big decisions incredibly wrong. I thought the Rangers one was a penalty, Ruffy, but my point on this, and this is where I think we'll hear from Graham soon, it's a little later on, is quite simply, I think in his ear, the referee should be should be told, OK, we think you've made a clear and obvious error. That's the first thing. We think you've made a clear and obvious error. Go and have a look at this and we'll show you the angles. From there, that's it. Mm-hmm. That is all you say to him. You then get, give the three angles for the referee to analyse it. And if the referee thinks it's a clear and obvious error, with no communication whatsoever, because he's there to referee the game, what you're giving him is an angle on it that he, ha- he maybe hasn't been able to see. Let him call it. If we're getting to a situation where VR is then refereeing it from the side, yeah. that's, I think that's the problem. I, I, think the, I think the problem we're all having is we would like to know the dialogue between, you know, come and have a look at it. When he gets over to that screen, what is the dialogue? What are they saying to each other, you know? And I'd love to know the percentage of decisions that are getting made. What kind of percentage is getting made? Is it the guy up there? Is it the referee who's finally making that decision? Because we're all guessing now because obviously they were Bremen beaten, but we don't know if the referee's going over the screen saying, well, I don't agree with you. You know, I'm sticking with that decision. You yeah, know, but we I, I thought when it was brought in, Ruffy, it's a video-assisted referee, so it, you're right, I agree with you. It's a referee's decision. Mm. So, you know, I know John Breton was brought into the argument yesterday, but it was Don Robertson who made those decisions, Pete. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's where I would point the finger if it was on the, the Celtic panel or the Celtic squad or the, or the bench, because I, I don't understand how you could come to those decisions. Yeah, uh, and with that in mind... Um, you know, we've got to pay tribute to uh, Motherwell in this because they scored two good goals. Bear scores a goal, and at the back post, again, um, I think uh, some people will be highly critical of Tavernier uh, allowing Casey to ghost off at the back post and get the header, but they get two goals and they get the win. I thought they deserved it, Peter. I think when you look at the highlights, I think Theo Bear caused goals and Suter all sorts of problems with his physicality, particularly the first goal. I think it was Suter, uh, he got bullied. You know, he, he, he tries to nick the ball off his striker and he, he turns him and he squares it to bear to score. Uh, Blair Spitwell, I think, hit the bar, you know, mm-hmm. at one each as well. So I, I think Motherwell deserved to win the game. I think Rangers, you can look at the, the chances he created and they never took them, but I think it's a great result for Motherwell and, and Theo Bear in particular, you know, caused goals and a lot of problems. So he's a guy that, if he continues to score goals for Motherwell, could maybe sneak them into the top six because they're not that far behind Hibs now. Here's, a po- here's one I want to ask you. Does the lack of a consistent goal score for Rangers per se makes a difference in a game like that? Yeah, I think so. I think Dessers has obviously scored a number of goals this season, Peter, but he looks as if he needs three, four, five chances a game. He's getting that at the minute because Rangers are creating a lot of chances, but I think a Chris Boyd type, a yeah, Lauren Shankland, I think they would have 30 or 40 goals for Rangers. I think the amount of chances he misses, and it's coming back to, it came back to haunt them at the weekend because... Although Motherwell took the lead, I thought Rangers created four, five, six good chances in the first half and one nil down. So, no, I think you're right. I, th- I don't think Dessler's the answer. He's scoring goals, but he should be scoring more goals, Peter. Do you think it's? I don't think it's going to be the defining moment in the in the old firm games, Neil, because the way the two of them are, they're, they're not they're not great. No, they're not. They're not. I, I mean, a lot of people have made that point over the course. That certainly Celtic standards and quality of performances and consistency has dropped a lot. This season, yeah, but you get every season's not the same. You don't have a divine right to win the title. Rangers is no, under, no question have improved under Philippe Comont with the work that he's done with the players, and that's why we have a, a title race. Quality's going to count in the end, Pete, or you know, just having that mentality. Celtic are 2 0 against Rangers this season, but you couldn't put a bet on them to win the next one. You know, with the inconsistency they've shown at the minute. Yeah, um, great credit to Motherwell and, no surprise, Stuart Kettlewell, full of praise for his side. Yeah, I didn't see as many of the kind of puppy dog guys today looking over at me as if uh, we were tired, you know, um, because I, I do believe in it. I was maybe harsh last week in one or two, um, but it's lessons that have to be learned in football. It really is. To get anything, to achieve anything, you are going to have to hurt and you have to going to go through the pain barrier. Yep, um, two good goals. Good three points. That was Motherwell. And over a 24-hour period, 
you could go on social media and you would think the points were already in the bag uh, for some people when Celtic were travelling through to the capital to face Hearts. Well, after 14 minutes, it really was uh, the script thrown out completely because Celtic were a man down. There were so many contentious issues to discuss. First of all, was it a red? Not for me. You know, I, I think, uh, unfortunately for the Celtic player, I think the speed that the Hearts player was coming in at, you know, he obviously couldn't stop. I just thought he tried to flick it over his head mm. and the speed that the Hearts boy was coming in at, he just couldn't stop. And unfortunately, it was a clash. If it was anything for me, it's a yellow card, you know, because I don't think it was intention. Anybody offering a different opinion? No, Peter, and they gave the yellow card initially as well. So the referee obviously thought it was a yellow card. And then obviously he said, uh, John Beaton in his ear, go and have a look at it again. And then what I don't like is the, the freeze it and the still where he's, his foot's high right next to Cochrane's face. As soon as the referee says that, he's going to send them off. Um, but if you look at it in normal time, Ruffy's he's spot on. He's tried to, the ball's bounced up and he's tried to just nick it over the boy's mm. head. Um, but the letter of the law, dangerous play, it's, it's probably a red card. Um, but common sense has surely got to think. You know, he's, See, he's, that, that's, 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 that's the thing. Minute, that's hold on a minute. I can't, I can't thing. let you away with that one on the basis that you can say by the letter of the law and people will be chucking things at the television right now. Wait a minute. Are we looking at a situation here where the letter of the law says if your studs are up there in a dangerous area towards the player's head, then it's a red card? Now, if that's the, if that's the situation, then it doesn't matter what people talk about common sense. Referees are there to implement yeah, I agree. the letter of the law. I agree, but this is the point I'm trying to make. Sometimes they can twist the rule a little bit to get to the conclusion that they want to get to. Was Yang in danger an opponent yesterday? Some people say he was, some people, me personally, I don't think he was. Cochrane, for me, didn't do anything wrong. He went to head the ball. Yang tried to flick it over his head. I'm not sure there's much contact. If he's going with a bit of force, Pete, you know, he's, he's doing it from a standing position as well. It's not like he's running or reaching, stretching for it. He's, he's, he's put the leg up, tried to flick it over his head. Don Robertson at the time went, boom, yellow card. That should have been the end of it. He goes over, has a look, and then he changes his mind. That's on Don again, like you know, unless there's a conversation, and they've gone, you know, by the rule here, Don, you need to send them off. But for me, one like I don't think there's <coughs> any malice at all. There's any intent to hurt Cochrane at all. All he's trying to do is flick it over his head. Two penalties. Oh. Both penalties. N neither. Neither. Of them. No. I, I think the the first one was just a tussle in the box. The two of them were pushing each other, and one fell over. I wouldn't have given a penalty for that. I thought two terrible decisions, Peter. I thought the Celtic one. I think there's nothing in that Celtic penalty, and then that the, Celtic, the one against Celtic is it's just a joke, Peter. I mean, I think Johnson pushes pushes Yang into the ball, and he's not even looking at it, and it brushes his hand. So here, by the letter of the law, then Tom, right? And I'm, I don't know if I'm confused on this or not. It's sort of like the silhouette where they use this word silhouette where the ball hits his arm. For me, like, what is looking that way? He's got Johnson coming in the back of him. The ball lands here, and he's, he's bumped. And maybe that moved his arm out, Pete. I don't know. Yeah. But for goodness sake, it cannot be a deliberate handball. Yeah. It I, really can't. And I think it goes back to what we were talking about on a regular basis, Ruffy. The handball and the interpretation of it is causing all sorts of pain yeah. and anger. Yeah, this, it seems to be your, your arms in an unnatural position. But there's sometimes in the box... <sighs> When you're defending your 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 body, to go back to the Rangers one, I don't think the the mother will win was a penalty because he's 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 put his hand up. It was a Lundstrom, wasn't it? He's he's not got his hand out there. The ball's actually hit his hand and took his hand up the way. So yeah, it's intent. It's just like oh, I was yeah, saying. Oh yeah, that was uh, Kilmarnock last week, wasn't it? No, they had it Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Uh, and I, I just don't think I'd love to know what the dialogue is. And Neil was saying there, Don Robertson's gave a yellow. What's he saying when he goes over to that video and said, I've given a yellow and somebody else is saying, well, you better have a look at this. I'd love to know if they say to themselves, well, I better give the red. I'm well, not to the yellow, I, I'm dying to know what the dialogue is and I think that should be open to everyone. I think that's an absolute necessity. Yeah, sorry, does it not need to be a clear and obvious error to overturn it? Yes. The original decision. So yeah. obviously Don Robertson thought he made a clear and obvious error by giving him a yellow. So you had to give him a red. Well, but, but by, by... No, what happens is the VR say to him, we've got to, you, we want you to have a look at this because we think you've made a clear and obvious right. error. And then he's got to... And then he's got to go back and, and assess whether he has or not. 
and then he makes the call. But as soon as he was called over for the penalty, I thought, this is going to be a penalty to Hearts. Everyone was saying that, and I was like, surely not. It's a stonewall certainty. But the other thing about it is, you know, listen, it's not as if it's an isolated, you know, one or the other, um, depending on which side of the bread you're buttered on. It doesn't matter um, what side of the bread you're buttered on. Yeah. Where your eggs are. We, we have both said <laughs> Celtic's penalty is not a penalty. Yeah. Hearts penalty is not a penalty, so we're not unconsciously biased in this paper at no. all. Well, the point I was going to make is Stephen Naismith agrees. One that I think we deserve to win, um, and there was a lot of action points, I suppose, but I think we started the game well, um, which got the crowd involved, and it was a good atmosphere. Uh, and then throughout the game, at the right times, we played, we controlled the game, we asked Celtic questions. Um, both penalties, I think, are soft. Uh, I think Alex puts his foot in the ground and the Celtic forwards the one that kicks him. Ours is this handball rule that I think nobody's happy with. Um, and the red card, I think, is a red card. So, everybody's got a say on it. Everybody's got an opinion. Um, some you like, some you don't. That's the nature of football. Um, Graham Soonis and Alan Stubbs were out at Hamden today uh, and both agreed that uh, VAR is now a farce and an embarrassment. Graham Soonis and Alan Stubbs met at Hamden Park this morning to preview this weekend's via play cup quarter final ties. Before looking ahead to this weekend, former Rangers manager Graham Soonis reflected on yet another weekend of VAR controversy in the Scottish game. But it's just the referees are I get embarrassed by VAR. It's not it's not aiding them, it's just making is showing them up in a bad light. I think there. I think most definitely. I think there's room for technology in football, like there is in every sport. But I think you know, it's not technology is a the technology is not the problem. But you have to forget that it's the people making the calls that are looking at that technology and getting it wrong on a weekly basis. And it'll be the same this weekend. And you've got your headline. The referees are not very good. And soon as his words were echoed by ex hibs boss Alan Stubbs. The penalty is farcical as far as I'm concerned. You know, this natural or non-natural position will, will create penalties as long as we keep going. The handball one is the most frustrating one going. I think these referees across the whole of the UK need help. Um, because I personally think that some of the referees on the pitch are not overturning the decisions because they're scared to upset the friends. Well, Peter, Ruffy, Tam, Neil, let's hear your thoughts. Do we have a problem with VAR in Scotland or is it just those using it? Well, it's an interesting <coughs> comment there, but one of them that Graham Soonis has mentioned, we've said ad nauseum on this show, Ruffy, is, is the technology is there um, to help um, but it will not provide the definitive. It is there to, in, in, in effect, and it's always been there to increase the percentage of getting decisions right. And as Graham mentioned, it's the interpretation and the calls from the officials again. And if you have inept officials mm -hmm. that are making these calls, it doesn't matter how much you've spent on technology. Yeah, I mean, we're all sitting there and we're, we're, we've been talking about decisions and we all just can't believe how they came to them. You know, we've not talked on the, the the heart goal that was disallowed with Lauren Shanklin. You know, the offside, that was offside because a quarter of his finger was was ahead. You know, yeah. it wasn't his body, it wasn't he, you know. And, and we're killing the game with stopping incidents like that just by looking. I thought we're going to just bring it in for goal line technology and, and clear and obvious offside decisions. But now we're monitoring everything. Right down to a centimetre. Yeah. Well, the other thing that if Arsene Wenger gets his way, then <clears throat> there'll be a change to the rule where it needs to be clear space between mm -hmm. man... Uh, It'll change uh, football forever for the better, in my totally. opinion. Totally, yeah. It'll be entertainment totally. goals. I, I can't wait. I really hope that, that rule does come in, Peter. But the, Graham made the point, referees need help. I mean, how much more help do referees need, Pete? Yeah. The referee again. We're giving them as... The game has given them as much help as they can, particularly with the technology, the cameras, you know, the, the, the action replay, the slow motion. Just get the decisions right. OK, I'm going to ask you then to view this next quote coming from Brendan Rogers, away from the aspect of referees and the decisions. 
Um, this is a separate situation. This is Brendan Rogers saying, I never like to comment on officials, but that cost us. The officiating from on field to John Beaton on VAR, that cost us. My feeling is that the game was decided by the officials on the field and outside of the field. Uh, today I felt that was really poor officiating. Um, I think Brendan might um, fall foul of the SFA for those comments. Um, Which ones? The, the criticism of both sets of referees and naming uh, John Beaton. I think he might be in hot water for that. I might be wrong, um, but I think the other aspect of it is, does he have to choose his words carefully on the basis that we are now in a situation which happens regularly, and it definitely happens you in your time. can't fan the flames. You cannot fan the flames. This is now down to the wire of a, <clears throat> a really hotly contested uh, title race between Rangers and Celtic. And people have to go about their daily lives without managers highlighting the name of the person on VAR. Am I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe Brendan was just caught in the moment of it all. I, no, I think he was, Peter. I think he's obviously had a quick look either during the game or after the game and he's seen the incidents and he's he's been raging. He's, he's probably looked at him at half-time, probably. And, listen, we've seen it before with Rangers, with Willie Collum, and they came out and named him and Willie got an awful lot of abuse off, off Rangers supporters. I think naming John Beaton, I think he's going to get a lot of stick from Celtic supporters. Yeah. And, I, and I don't like that, Peter. I think, listen, you can disagree with the decision. I don't think any referee, and I still believe this, I don't think any referee or official is going to be biased towards a team. I think they're going to make the decision. It might be the, you know, it might be the right decision or the wrong decision, but they're going to make a decision. I don't think they're looking at, looking at it by a bias. And I think it's dangerous to start naming officials uh, and, and contemplating and, and insinuating that they're biased towards a certain club. I don't think he, I don't think Brendan uh, insinuated any bias at all. I genuinely don't, Tom. Um, I just think by naming him um, on this powder keg, which you know what the two sets of fans are like. I mean. It, it, it would probably be a better choice of words just to say, look, I just felt on and off the field today, they got it wrong. Listen, I've been there myself. Yeah. And I know the emotion of a defeat and, you know, how aggrieved Brendan would have felt after the game. There is history between him and John Beaton. You know, when you look back at the, it was a derby at Abrox where he, he could at least send two or three players off for the opposition. Anyway, I, uh, naming him, it's not great. Yeah. And he could be in a bit of hot water for that. The rest of his comments I don't have a problem with because the game was re-refereed yesterday. Although bottom line is it's all down to Don Robertson's interpretation of what he saw in the VAR, allegedly. Yep. So, you know, as much as John made of it, his error, then the referee would have made his error as well, I'd have thought. Is there a need for a... I mean, I'm quite strong on this. I think that, for me personally, I would like to see the um, decision explained so that the fans are clued up on it and everybody else is clued up on it. That exchange has to be clarified. The referee has to make the call without, in, in my mind, any interference from the VAR other than saying we're using the technology to show you where we hear a clear, uh, uh, you know, a clear and obvious error. If there is an exchange of dialogue, I think that's got to be heard. Yeah, I also think, and I've said this for a long time, you need ex-players in there with it. Now, give an advice at least, Peter. You know, they don't have to take that advice, but certainly debating what they're talking about because they've been there and played the game. Well, so I'm will looking slow at the process down. It shouldn't. I'm looking at Graham Sooner, I'm looking at Alan Stubbs, I'm looking at Stephen Nesmith, I'm looking at all these other players and managers who you're talking about VAR over in England or in Scotland, and they're always like baffled by the decisions. Because they have played the game. You cannot, for me, it, the handball, whether it's in the letter of the law or not, is not a handball. There's, there's no way in a million years that should have been given. It's like me pushing you into the ball and you hit the ball with your hand and then the referee gives a penalty against you. It, it can't, that's not right, Peter. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> if you had an ex player in there, you don't have to agree with me, but you can actually say, look, this is this is a player's point of view from it. So long as there's no, again, subconscious bias involved in that player's participation. Yep. Well, uh, you need to get foreign players in. <coughs> well, -players. the other thing I was going. To, well, of course, this is the other aspect <laughs> of it, which only it's not only in this country. There is, uh, and I would say this 
without fear of contradiction. It's not only in this country because, quite simply, tribalism exists everywhere, Rafi. Yeah. You know, um, whether it be, uh, you know, from a religious standpoint, from, you know, a country standpoint, um, from a club standpoint, it's always there. Um, yeah, I've seen managers in England, clubs in England, having problems with certain referees, Peter. Yeah. And they're being named. You know, I think Paul Tierney would be one of them. You know, uh, Anthony Taylor over the years as well. So it's not exclusive the up here in Scotland yeah. about you know individualising referees and their decisions. Can I obviously highlight a positive here, which is back-to-back -back wins for Hearts. I think Stephen Naismith, and again, you know, let's not forget uh, there were some people giving him stick as a young manager, you know, trying to make his way, needs a bit of support, suddenly has turned it around. And, you know, you're looking at the third place, 13 points clear of fourth place St Mirren. He deserves a bit of credit, and so did the team for their performance, because they still had to still had to win the game. Yeah, you're right. You know, there was a lot of heart <coughs> supporters just didn't fancy him at all. They weren't prepared to give him a chance. Obviously, the debacle of who was the manager, who wasn't the manager, didn't help things. But once that was sorted out, he did have a big ask. He needed to get a run of games, a wins, to get the supporters behind him. And he certainly done that. You can't take that away from him. You know, and they deserve every uh, pundit and, and applaud the way they're playing as well and scoring goals. Yeah. Um, just as an aside, um, it's quite a long break for, um, obviously, a number of teams. Mother will have got a long break. Hearts will be involved next week in the, the Scottish Cup. Um, and Rangers are in action this week as well. What a big chance for uh, Rangers, albeit away first leg to Benfica, mm. a chance for them to record a good first leg, hopefully, and the coefficient I always look at, Rangers seem to be flying the flag consistently. Yeah, and, and I think I think <coughs> Porto battered Benfica last night, I think it was, <coughs> it was four or five nothing, mm -hmm. so they'll not come into this game in, in top form um, at the minute as well, Sporting Lisbon I think are top of that league, and, and Benfica and Porto are well behind, so listen, I think any, you know, if Rangers can go over there and, and just get some sort of result, keep the tie alive, I think you would fancy them at a packed tie, Brooks, to to get through in that tie. Uh, Benfica will be strong, but as I said, Rangers in European football in the last two or three, four seasons have been have been excellent. So I think they'll fancy their chances in that tie, Peter. Do you fancy them, Ruffy? I don't fancy them over there. Uh, I do fancy them at Ibrox, but obviously with the, what carried on at the weekend, if they put in that kind of performance, no, I don't fancy them. But as Tam said, they have been very good in Europe and they seem to have players in there who suit European style of football. I have a sneaky feeling that Rangers can get through over the two legs. Don't see why not. Yeah. And though Benfica aren't the, you know, the team they were maybe four or five years ago, they were beaten by <coughs> Lisbon and obviously Porto last night. They're still a formidable opponent. But um, I think you know you'd want to be in the competition if you're a Rangers player. You know, Europa League, going for the championship, going for a treble. You you know you want to play in these games, and I think you come out of it better. Regardless if you go through or not, it's got to be a real test of their squad, though, as you well know in these these yeah, competitions. You know, come on, yeah, just play the games, rest, play the games. You just get into that rhythm, you know. And I think they've got decent enough depth for certainly the domestic game to cover that. I'm going to go for them over the two legs, Ruffy. What about you? Uh, can you let me see the first leg first? No, no. shut it. Give me the <laughs> give me your answer. <laughs> I think it's going to be tight, but if they can come back with a draw or something like that, I fancy them either. Yeah. Lenny? Ben Vigda for me. Just. Just. I think if you'd have asked me this on Friday, I'd have said Rangers, but that performance is putting a you know a flying ointment for me at the weekend against Motherwell, but I think Rangers might just nick, nick through, yeah, I'll go for Rangers. Yeah, yeah. Um, two Rangers, uh, I'm not sure, and a Ben Fika. What are you said? You're not sure? No, I'm sure. I'm, I think Rangers will nick through. I think Rangers will get through two legs. You? Yeah, oh. He's waiting for the last ten minutes of the second leg. Fans. What are you saying, Benfica? No, I'll sway towards Rangers. Yeah, OK. Um, God, I'm trying to drag an opinion out of you these <laughs> days. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you is, if we're, if we're dragging an opinion out of each other regarding the situation with the title race, what about the bottom? Because I'm now looking and thinking to myself, Aberdeen are in a, a relegation battle, Ruffy. I think it all depends on the, the players now. I'd forget about the manager, everything that's going on with the manager, he's just having a shocker. So it's up to the, the players to group together and see themselves out here because I think they've got some right good players in that side. It just depends whether they can handle the pressure you know, at the end. Yeah, um, talking about pressure, Stephen Robinson reckons you can see that the Dons are a team under pressure. 
It was everything we deserved. You know, we we dominated the game. They scored from a wonder goal. Like, uh, you know, you have to hold your hands up. What a goal! Um, unsavable. So credit to the boy. But um, out with that, they had no threat. They looked like a team that were under pressure um, and played like that. So um, we we tried to get the ball down and not go into that long ball game. And, uh, you know, by the amount of possession we had, you can see that. But um, and when we did that, we controlled the game. So I thought we got what we deserved. I, I mean, I'm looking at it, Neil, and I'm thinking, okay, Aberdeen have won nothing up. Mm. Just just lock the door at the back now. Yeah, I mean, the penalty, like we've talked, touched on earlier, it's debatable, but you know, the more I saw it, the more I thought it was a penalty. And then the fragility of Aberdeen in this moment where they are, you know, the panic sets in and, um, you know, the second goal's poor. You know, they don't stop the cross and then when it's headed back in, Olusanya's not being picked up and he's got a tap in and, you know, it's just the way things are going for Aberdeen. At the minute. I don't think they'll go down. I don't even think... They'll make the second playoff place. You know they've got Miofsky. Um, he he's a goal scorer. He can get them out of trouble. They've got McGrath. They've got you know the likes of Shinny. They've got quality players at this level who should be able to see them through. But they're just not in a good good place at the minute. To be honest with you, Peter, they've not been in a good place for the majority of the season. The football's not been good. I watched them, you know, a few months back against Hibs in the semi-final of the League Cup. They got through, but I thought they were very fortunate, Tom. You know and. Um, it's been a sort of difficult watch for the Aberdeen fans as the seasons wore on. Um, every now and again, they, they get a, a result against Celtic or a win at Abrox, whatever you want to call it. But over the piece, they've been they've been poor six wins out of I don't know, was it 20 or 29 games now? You know, for a club of the size of Aberdeen and the the investment that they put in the squad, I agree with Ruffy. It's down to the players now. They've got to show what they're about. It's not been good. Um, obviously, the penalty put them on the back foot, and then you just got the feeling that they were going to cave in, and that's how it unfolded. Um, as far as the decision to give the penalty, again, this is the Aberdeen manager, Neil Warnock, critical of the decision. You know, does he realise when you've put that much effort in to be stood around for five minutes? You, you, you know, my lads have got cramp. Are you in me? They're struggling. Three or four of them were struggling. One of them. Richard, who's, who's, who's only come in this morning because we, we lost Jack this morning. Uh, Richard couldn't move. He said five minutes ago, he said, I can't, I can't move, you know. And he's supposed, you know, he's marking the lad. They shouldn't be stood about for four or five minutes on a bloody freezing afternoon for VAR. Mate, it's scandalous. OK, um, <clears throat> that didn't really address uh, in many people's minds the decision of whether VR was right or not. It was a close call. Did you think it was a penalty? I thought it was a penalty, Peter. Um, I totally agree with Neil. At first thought, you think it's just a coming together, but you can see he just nicks the ball, the St Mullen player, and Devlin catches him. You know, it's a, it's a foul. Um, and then you're, you're looking at is it inside or outside the box. It was clearly inside the box, so I think, I think they got to the right decision. But I agree, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be taking five minutes, Peter. I think you know a couple of looks at it, right? Penalty, you know, five minutes at the end of a game is right. You know, people stiffening up. You know, you having to warm up again, uh, in a big decision. But they got there in the end, and then Aberdeen have just got to, you know, take the point at that point. You know, they've they've, they've been ahead for a long time in the game. Just take your point and move on. And, and as Neil said, they they just panicked. You know, didn't pick up the boy in the box and and St Mern nick it at the end and that, is, that was a dagger that was a real hammer blow for Aberdeen to lose that game after leading it for 96 minutes I think since he's arrived he's had four defeats roughly two draws and one win against Bonnie Rig Rose um, by the way he's been savaged in a number of quarters mm. in our industry um, and I have posed Neil and I were talking about it pre the show would he have be, been savaged if he was Scottish the way that some people have been jumping on his head no, I, th I think uh, he's probably been savage because people can't understand how they came to the decision to go for somebody like that when we have home base. But, that, but that's irrelevant. You've got to look I at know. a guy for his for his CV yeah. and look at his job. Surely we're not judging people on whether they've they've managed here or whether they're Scottish or whatever. No, I mean that's up to the individual how to judge them. You know, I I, I would say oh, okay, I don't see what he's doing behind the scenes. I don't see what he's doing at training. I don't know if he's a motivational in the dressing room if he's. He's got the group collectively. I don't get any of that. I just think it's the players on the park that are losing horrendous goals. But just to get back to the thing, why is it taking five minutes? Mm. Why is it taking five minutes if you're looking at a screen going, as, well, it's either in the box or out the box. Yeah. What, what are they looking at for five minutes? 
I'm not buying into his. I, I'm not buying into the cramp situation or any of that. I'm just looking at him as a manager, and I, I looked at his CV, and I, again, I, I disregard anybody who wants to be ageist about it. Anybody no, I agree. Xenophobic about it. The facts are, are plain and simple. When you see the results, he lives or, or dies by them. They've made the appointment short term, whether it's right or wrong. You then have to look at him and say, right. Just on you go. On you go, and, and, and we'll view what you're doing. But should should everybody be expecting a quick fix from Neil Warnock on a team of underachievers? No, but I thought it was a sensible appointment, to tell you the truth. He did wonders at Huddersfield last... Neil, Neil Warnock's career is... He's probably one of the greatest championship managers ever since the inception of the, the Premier League and then you had the championship underneath. I don't know how many promotions he's got on the CV. I don't know how many clubs he's saved, Peter, from relegation. He, he just never made that step up to the Premier League and been a consistent Premier League manager. But he knows how to galvanise a, a club. He knows how to galvanise a team. And I, I was listening to some of the feedback after the game on, on Saturday and I thought it was very, almost like a wolf pack, you know, going after him and picking up things he had said in previous interviews and amalgamating them all together into sort of like a character assassination. I thought it was pretty unfair. I think he's gone in with the best intentions. It's not working out at the minute, but I still think they'll be all right. Yeah, he needs to sort his defence out. They've lost 11 goals in five games. With all due respect, the last three managers said the same thing. The, but the, the Aberdeen defence has been ranked rotten for about needs, three or four years. He needs to get them organised at the back, Peter, because if they keep continuing to lose goals, they're losing nearly two goals a game at the minute, they're going to be in trouble because they've always got to go in them. Um, but as, he, as he, will, says, he will know that, Tom. He's got to sort, he's got to get a, a certain system, you know, and get them together and, and been horrible. You know, he spoke about it last week, you know, they can't score for the stand, clear your lines. Aberdeen need to start keeping clean sheets, Peter, they're going to be in bother. He's always been a bit divisive, Neil, a bit like myself, like, you know, like a Sean Dyche or whatever. Marmite, some people like you, some people don't, you know, and what we're seeing at the minute is like this sort of groundswell of people who, who don't like him jumping on a bandwagon that shouldn't really be there. I think he'll, he'll get Aberdeen out of trouble and I wouldn't put it past them to get a result against Kilmarnock, even though that's going to be really difficult. Yeah, I, I, the one thing about it, Ruffy, the, the facts don't lie. I'm looking at them. The 27 points. Ross County have got 23. It's it's one of those situations where maybe just one result can start to calm the waters and allow them to to have some kind of positivity to build on. Yeah, I'm a wee bit like Neil. I think they've got players in there who've got a wee bit of quality. I think they're just lacking a wee bit of confidence. I don't think mm. that. I think they're very very lightweight in certain positions, but they just need their striker he starts scoring again I mean the success they were having when he was scoring he's sort of a scluffing it by the post now and not getting the, the right connection and no hitting the back if he hits the back of the net they'll be safe I think that, I think they've got some good players there OK um, the only one thing I would say and I'm not too happy about it is uh, obviously the chairman um, I think a lot of people are looking at the board and saying you've got it so wrong um, the chairman came out and basically took to Twitter to say that he shares the frustrations, but he won't be walking away, um, and they'll get it right. Uh, it's, it's not a great catchphrase in Scotland to be to be no, using, or he could be getting <laughs> he'll be getting pelters shortly if they don't get another couple of wins. Yeah, I, I, listen, I'll be getting walking away. I'll be hounded out the yeah, door. He's, he's only hiding to nothing after a game like that. He come on social media. I mean, you may as well just keep him quiet. Obviously, he's frustrated as well. Alan Burrows is, is quite active in social media, and he he was frustrated so. Listen, the Aberdeen fans are looking at it and going, you know, you've got the last possibly three or four managers wrong. You know, with Jim Goodwin, Stephen Glass, Barry Robson, now Neil Warnock. Um, so they're getting it in the neck, but I still think they'll be fine. They've got they've got too much quality, but, you know, Neil spoke about it earlier, the amount of investment put into Aberdeen, you know, they, they should be, they should not be where they are. And I think that's, I think the players have got to take a look at themselves as well. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm being consistent on it and I've been consistent on it for... Many, many moons, long before you were on the programme, may I add. Um, you know, if they're looking to change the mindset at Aberdeen, if they're looking to change the training and change the recruitment po uh, policy, then I think Stephen Robinson, I think your man Neil Lennon, um, who else did we mention on Friday? Malky Mackay. Uh, mm -hmm. Malky Mackay, whether they... Uh, boy, boy Baxter. Stuart Baxter always gets a mention <laughs> from Ruffy. He's been, he's been linked with every job. We've missed him that much. But I do think as far as all of the components to change the mindset at a club like Aberdeen needs 
some of the some of the managers have mentioned, and and just a change um, away from. You know, looking for a bit of experience, Ruffy. I think they need the experience of the league. I think if they want to be the club that they think they should be, they need someone who's able to do that. Yeah, I think my, my biggest criticism with, with Rangers and Celtic are going to, and they go in particular as well, because I think certain players, and I say that a couple of weeks ago, I don't think they can handle the the remit in front of 50,000, 60,000. I think that's fallen into the category of Aberdeen now. They're getting crowds of seventeen and 18,000 particularly at home, I and mean, when things aren't going particularly well, if you've not got a certain player who can deal with that environment and going behind, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Um, Hibs to Ross County nil. Your man, he's starting to just get a wee team together that looks OK. Yep, first time really under him that Hibs have shown a bit of consistency, to be honest with you. Um, very unfortunate not to beat Hearts during the week. Should have won the game, done by a dodgy uh, refereeing decision. And... Comfortable win, don't think Hibs were great first half, I watched the game, they huffed and puffed. Second half they got the goal through a goalkeeping error and then, to be fair to Marsh, it's a great save from Brophy, ball comes across and it's a good save at an important time in the game. And then the players that Hibs are bringing on, you can see the, the strength and depth of the squad, Dylan Levitt I think is a good player, comes on and kills the game off. So all of a sudden from looking as if they were going nowhere, cut a decent results back to back and, and they're now in the top six above Dundee. So I think they'll have their eyes on fourth place now I think they're only eight points behind still a long way to go in the season and, and they can maybe look at fourth place now Hibs yeah and can I ask you this what about the quarter final of the cup they're hitting form at the right time uh, before they play Rangers Rangers have obviously got a tough game on Thursday night which I don't think it's going to help them Hibs will be rested ready but in recent terms Hibs' record against Rangers has been dreadful um, going back you know, I think Neil's probably the last, one of the last managers that beat them as a Hibs manager, so they've got to change that mindset, they've got to change that, that run of form. Um, but Hibs are just, they're starting to click and their strength and depth is, is strong and they've got competition for places, so they'll get into that game with a lot of confidence after the last couple of performances. Um, um, can I just say, Tom, we're all dinner, by the way, aren't we? We are, aye. Yeah, because yeah. you said Hearts were going to batter. Yes. That, I'll quote you on that. <laughs> batter, Hibs. <laughs> So you've we, we, taken yeah. it's, to be yeah. fair, by the way, it's taken uh, it's taken Brion or something like that. Nice, nice bottle of red. Likes, uh, he likes the Dakota. Oh, does he? All right, not a deal in it. Feels a good in there. Yeah. Thankfully, he didn't say which Dakota <laughs> bombarded on the night. No, no, I have to take it on the chin, Ruffy, because at the end of the day, you fairly settled into that couch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have to take it on the chin we'll, we'll go out do you want to go out this week or do you want to make it next week well, um, kind of next week is we you're, jolly you're, you're, you're hobnobbing away no? uh, week after week after <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Calm down. He's on a jolly. He usually goes. Sorry, I meant he's working. Usually goes tonto if you see. <laughs> anyway, I'm a professional, <laughs> Tom. Exactly. I will. Do uh, you want to go this week or next week? Or the week after. The week after. Right. Okay. The week. That's the end of March. Are you happy with that? Delighted. Right. Magic. Okay. I'll stand by it. Uh, I won't be doing that again, Nori, I have to tell you. Um, it was a good game, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Ross oh. County, by the way, um, we've got to mention them because if Aberdeen have slaughtered <laughs> these them... Di these disasters, you, you seem to revolve around Hibs Arts games. How? Us, the last one with your prediction of... Oh, yeah, the, the weight goes on. Scottish Cup, the weight goes on, yeah. Do you know what, actually? I mean, realistically, I, I did, honestly, I was in the, in, at Tyne Castle and I thought to myself... Hibs have started to show a little spark, but then they were, Hibs deserved to win it. They had three or four big, big chances in the game. So, And then when it was a draw, I just actually uh, I knew right away that I'd lost it because, you know, he very rarely tweets to me unless it's really important. Or there's a message, you know, and the text come in and I thought, now I know I'm in trouble. But I'll happily take you out. What about Ross County? Because we're talking about Aberdeen being in relegation trouble, but at least Ross County, you know... <clears throat> Are, are above Livingston with a bit of space, six points, and they can see Aberdeen as maybe something to, to put a little bit of pressure on. Yeah, um, I watched them against St Mirren midweek, and um, you know they got a, a break of the, with a goal of the Gogic back pass, but they, they weren't good enough to see it out here. That's my concern. You know, I expect that Hibs to beat them at the weekend, which they've, they've duly done. The home form is going to be imperative to them, I think. You know, they took four points out of six before the the Hibs scheme. But you can't write them off. But then St Johnson can get a great win at Aberdeen the other night, you know, and then another point at the weekend. So it's getting really, really tight there. Um, I still think it'll be Livy and St Johnson for some reason. 
in my mind. I just don't know if St Johnson will score enough goals. I think Ross County have got goals in them with the strike force that they have. But yeah, I mean, it's it's going to go right to the wire on that one as well, I think. Ravi? I think the split's going to be really interesting. I think if you listen to all the managers and the, the bottom six now, they're all trying to convince themselves that they can beat anybody. It's in that bottom six. And I wouldn't argue with that because in any given day, you know, they probably could. I think, I think it's always important when that split comes, the three home games and the two away games, you know, that's a massive big help to anybody. So, no, I, I think it's still out there, but still the three obvious ones, I think, will be there at the end. OK, um, Jink Kilmanek are going to hold on to fourth. It was a, a good fight back for Derek McInnes' side. It was, but again, Dundee can't <coughs> hold on the lead. I think they've, they've dropped so many points this season, Dundee, from, from winning positions, probably the most in the league. Uh, particularly against 10 men set piece in the last minute, you think you would expect them to hang on for that three points. And judging by the highlights, it looked as if you know a draw was a fair result. I think the sending off kind of changes the game. You know, I thought it was a sending off. See, I, I didn't. Do you not think it? No. Do you think Mail was in a sandwich? I just think like he puts an arm across him and the wee Tiffany sort of falls into him. I didn't think he, I mean, he used his body well, but I didn't think he, he sort of wrestled him to the ground, Tom. What? He's cracked a joke. He's cracked a joke. Have I missed it? <laughs> oh, he does it every week. He does it every week. I, see, I thought Mayo was caught in a sandwich. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh no. Listen, listen. What do you want? I hate him. Do you want uh, listen, you? You hate him. Do you want? Do you want puns with boy? Do you? <laughs> or puns with this idiot? Am I right? Uh, uh, anyway. was when, what was when he said Burr will claw that one back? Oh, you know, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Dundee took him out. Uh. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, Ruffy. Uh, I might actually go up to Den's party because Dundee Aberdeen uh, next Wednesday that is squeaky bum time I think I genuinely think Aberdeen are in relegation trouble got to win that game next week at Dens I don't think they've got to win it you know I still think it's either them in the bottom six if they were in the bottom six when, yeah. it, when it happens I still think they're good enough to beat the other teams yeah, yeah. I think the cup game's massive for them and all Peter yeah come on up. you know yeah, because absolutely, but if I'm they go out of the cup then they've got really relatively not a lot to look forward to other than like a, a scrap. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to ask this question. I'm not being in any way derogatory towards Neil Warnock. But you, you mentioned the, how important the cup game is. I think the league game is, has got massive implications for them, for the mindset, for whether they've got the, the mentality, the spine, the battling qualities, all of that. Do you think he will walk away? No, I don't think he will, Peter. I think uh, I think he's there to see the job out to the end of the season, um, regardless of the res result of the weekend. But it's a perfect example of careful what you wish for, Peter. I think the uh, Aberdeen fans had Derek McInnes there, who done a great job, you know. And eventually, I think they they got sick of him, sick of the style of play, even though he was successful. They went through a plethora of managers, you know, since then, and Derek could really got him stick the knife in at them the weekend. Yeah. Um, OK, I've asked the question. Uh, St Johnston won, Livingston won. Ruffy, in the end, every point now for St Johnston will be absolutely, you know, celebrated because Craig Levine's remit is as simple as it is for Neil Warnock or, uh, again, Don Cowie or, indeed, David Martindale uh, in a more difficult set of circumstances. It's just quite simply, make sure we're not second bottom. Definitely don't want to be relegated. No, oh, and he'll be disappointed at the weekend, obviously, that it could have went either way, but obviously, Nicky Clark back in the, in the game now, and, and he does score goals in these matches, so that's what they'll be holding on to, but listen to David Martindale's you know, interview, he, he's got to keep believing, he's got to make sure his players keep believing that even when it comes to the split, if it's five points or six points, are still good enough to win the game. Yeah, well, they've got a quarter-final against Celtic in the Cup, and of course, he's taking positives from that draw at the weekend. We started the game um, seven points behind Ross County. We're now six points behind Ross County. And you've got, for me, I think it's important that I focus on the positives. The players are all in there. They're gutted. They've been gutted. They've been gutted most games when you, you don't pick the points up. But trying to explain it to them, and I'm, I'm, I'm not coming over here sounding a wee bit delusional. If you're 1-0 down there and you were the team that scored that last goal, the narrative changes. It's a great point. It's a great point. It's a great point. Yep, he's got to take a positive from it, got to try and get something positive to stimu stimulate the players. Um, as ever, we always get uh, notes coming in late, uh, stories emerging that we want to obviously 
uh, re react to and this is a statement coming out from Celtic Football Club uh, that it's confirmed that it will be appealing the red card issued to Yang during Sunday's match against Hearts at Tynecastle. We've also written to the SFA to raise our serious concerns regarding the use of VAR and the decisions made within the match. As we have said before, for some time Celtic has sought to work with the footballing authorities with the aim of improving standards associated with refereeing and the use of VAR in Scotland, something which is clearly in the wider interests of everyone within the game. OK, <clears throat> there's a statement from Celtic. We've had that before um, from Rangers. We've had it from other clubs about, you know, the concerns. So will this gain any traction? I think so, no. It hasn't in the past, you know, that uh, you've got every right, you know, to hear your views, you know, but uh, they don't seem to be listening to them in general. Uh, so I, I basically think it'll be a waste of time. Yeah, waste of time, Neil. What, appealing the red card? No, or no, having a word with the authorities? Just basically, obviously highlighting serious concerns. I agree, Rolfi. I think Celtic had to make a statement. You know, the fans would have been demanding it from the club, you know, after the performance of the, the officials yesterday. I think it's worth appealing the red card as well, yes. I have to say. You know, they might have a chance of winning that. OK, it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out um, and whether we need to have um, another summit. It's undoubtedly oh, no. not too far away. Um, and then communication between them all to try and yeah, we, we thought We thought VR would stop us talking about refereeing decisions on this show and we would well, we concentrate can. on the football and the good play, but now we seem to be talking about it even more. We're only three or four weeks away from previously all the media being brought in and, and speaking to Crawford Allen, mm. you know? And, and there's undoubtedly been communication between the SFA and the clubs again and consistently. So, and I'll tell you right now, it will not in any way uh, stop. I, if anything, for me, this is going to increase and increase because the big two are going for the title. So it will increase. This is, you could have a, they could call a summit tomorrow. It will matter not a jot. This will intensify when it comes down to someone winning the title. VAR, at the start of the season, we all said, if this is a close title race, this is going to be hell to pay. And this is the way it's, uh, this is the way it's panning out. The, the top man for UEFA here at the weekend having some big meeting before the thing. Yeah, Gianni Infantino. What came out of it? Well, what were they discussing? They're not going to use well, the blue they're cards. Not, they're not, they're not, yeah, that's, well, that's the first one. And something else. Nothing to change. Yeah. Um, meeting to change the handball rule or change... It's these wee, stupid wee things, you know. Yeah, I, I think you're not going to find out exactly what the contents of the meeting um, were about, but nevertheless, you certainly uh, would have been watching and seeing how VAR was used in that game between St Mirren and Aberdeen. Just before we finish, just quickly on that, and I might as well get your take on it, because it's a rare time when Celtic and Rangers uh, lose over a weekend. Here's the, here's the run-in for Rangers and Celtic, and I wonder if any of you are changing your mind on it. Rangers and Celtic, the pre-split fixtures. Rangers Dundee away, Hibs at home, Celtic at home and Ross County away, Celtic St Johnston at home, Livingston away, Rangers away and St Mirren at home. So, uh, I, would, I would think slightly easier fixtures for, for Celtic there. Um, but they've obviously got to go to Ibrox as well. And that's going to be a crucial game, Peter. That's going to be not only for in terms of points, but momentum for the rest of the season. You know, if Rangers win that, they're massive favourites. Celtic need to avoid defeat for me uh, and then try and take it to the game to Celtic Park. How do you see it all going then? I, I really fancied Rangers um, before that game at the weekend and that's <clears> not seen their bubbles burst but all of a sudden that air of invincibility that they had in terms of under Philip Clement, you know, losing at home to Motherwell is a, is a huge blow. Are you um, changing your mind? No, I still I, I think Rangers might just edge it, Peter. Ruffy? At this moment, Rangers, yeah. Uh, I don't think Celtic have got anybody on the bench that can come on and change games the way they used to do when they, they needed it. Um, it's always, I think every manager says it's always good to have the points in the bag. They've got their noses in front. It was a big opportunity lost. Will they have another one? Uh, Celtic? Yeah. yeah, of course they will, yeah. You know, they've got to play Rangers twice, so they've got to look at those games for a start. You know, think about winning them. You know, they're 2-0. But I do have concerns, there's no question. You know, for the first time in a while, you know, the... The McGregor loss, with the games coming up, I think they can cope without him. But they'll need a back for the Rangers game, no question. Or they're in trouble. Oh, well, yeah, they will be, yeah. I think they will be. You know, he's a big loss to the team. He's a captain and he's been outstanding 
you know, over 10 years. And that experience is vital in those games. OK, last point, predictor table. <laughs> Don't think we get many points at the weekend, Ruffy, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's that dramatic change. Ruffy up to 11th, <laughs> right? Ruffy's 11th, Tam's dropped to 13th. And can you catch Aurora Borealis, uh, Ruffy? That's the key question. No. Please catch him. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done to Aurora Borealis out in front in the predictor. Um, as ever, um, anybody stop Man City? You think, still think they'll win the league? Oh, listen, they were brilliant yesterday. It's a hard one. I still think it's a hard one to call. Yeah. There's still so many games to go. The, the three teams are in Europe. Liverpool, I'm worried about with the injuries. Arsenal were amazing against Newcastle, but then they've got a big game coming up against Porto. They've got to play Spurs, they've got to play City, they've got to play Liverpool. City have got to play Liverpool. They've all got to play each other. So it's still up in the air, but you would have to say at the minute, you know, they look really, really strong. But I, I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm 100% sure they're going to win the league. Yeah, OK. Um, it's all about opinions. Hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Uh, you'll get opinions, you'll get puns, uh, and you'll get, people, <laughs> you'll get people taking others out for a meal. And, and, and sometimes... Don't put your eggs in the basket as well. <laughs> exactly. And so, it's a solid nightmare spot. Sometimes because you have to listen to him. <laughs> well, I think that's, a, that's a classic. Oh, really is, by the way. At that point, I'm actually looking. I'm going. What am I talking about now? Am I talking about a handball? Is Easter coming a up? Penalty. Easter's coming up. Absolutely. Uh, thanks to Tam. Thanks to Neil. Thanks to Ruffin. From myself, Peter Martin. Thank you for listening and watching.